sure we're going to see the war dance as well. They're wearing the tour beads, the war beads. This man says, and he really believes it, that he is summoning up the spirits of ancient Samoan warriors as he goes into battle for the World Heavyweight Championship. There are a thousand people here from New Zealand. A few hundred too from his native Samoa. He carries all their hopes. Those countries will be at a standstill now as Tua enters the ring with a tremendous sense of destiny. His friends call him Mafalfal Tavita, Leo Mafalfal Sanerivi Talamitazi. Just as well they didn't put that on the ballot papers in Florida this week then. Well, thank, thank goodness he changed it as well. David Tua is good enough for us. But then here's the man that you don't see no fear in his eyes. I haven't seen many Lennox Lewis opponents as up for this, has got that much sense of destiny, believe they can rip the heavyweight title away from Lennox Lewis. David Tua, the Tua man, believes he can. Just look at him. He almost looks like some character from WWF, doesn't he? He cuts an unlikely fighting figure, but his record tells a different story. A slugger, knockout specialist who's been waiting his chance for two years, only beaten once in 38 fights, never stopped, never floored as a pro. 25 knockouts inside three rounds. The number one contender, this is a real fight. Just look at the size of that neck. And if you go further down, I've seen thinner oak trees than those legs of Tua. No wonder it's so hard to put him on the floor. And now we await the entrance of Lennox Lewis. They're not just overdoing the royal angle a bit here, are they? Well, just slightly. Well, he does like to call himself King of the Hill, doesn't he, these days? Well, he's done everything to prove that he is King of the Hill. This is somebody else in his way. Lennox Lewis is, I believe, at his peak, at his very best. He's going to be a hard champion to dethrone, but David Tua says he can do that. Well, Lennox has been making people wait for him all week, and it looks as if he's going to do the same here. Looks like a kind of mock-up of the tower, doesn't it? <laughs> Whoever did it should be in the tower, I think. <laughs> Back to the drawing board next time, I guess. <laughs> Do it. Kept waiting. I don't think he's going to worry about that. He's been up for this all week. Britain not only has the World Heavyweight Champion, it also has the Olympic Champion at the moment in Audley Harrison. Audley, let me ask you, how do you think Lennox is looking here? Yeah, Lennox looks real focused. He's come out here with, with a clerical aspect, and Lennox is definitely ready to rumble. You can see that in his face. He's ready to go, most definitely. We'll have the odd word with Audley as the night goes on. Lewis tonight in his 14th World Heavyweight Championship fight. Only Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes and Mike Tyson have had more in history. There's his mum, Violet, his biggest fan and super cook, by the way. A spectacular entrance. But I think most of it will be bypassing Lewis, who looks as if he's in the zone there, Glenn, doesn't he? Yes, he does, as always, totally focused. He really is a, a thorough professional. 
Just a little chip there entering the ring. Six and a half more million pounds tonight, taking his ring earnings to an estimated 70 million pounds. We want some fireworks during the action too, don't we? Well, I think in this fight you're going to get that. I think David Tua is going to be a hard man to keep down. But Lewis, with his skills, has got to try and do that. 35 now, but not too many hard fights. The world supreme heavyweight and the silence from his old critics of late has been deafening. But it's worth remembering that at 35, a heavyweight, any fighter, can age overnight. Can tour take Lennox Lewis into the trenches tonight? The Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Main events, Panex Promotions and your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. Always proud to be your bud. In association with America Presents and Lion Promotions present, courtesy of TVKO Pay-Per-View, HBO World Championship Boxing. 12 rounds for the universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point must system are Chuck Jampa, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working for the 135th time in a world title bout, referee Joe Cortez. So now, for the sold-out thousands in attendance here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas and the millions watching around the world, courtesy of TVKO and HBO, the moment we've all been waiting for has arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with white. He weighed in at 245 pounds and brings an outstanding professional record into the ring consisting of 37 victories, including 32 knockouts with only one disputed defeat by decision. From South Auckland, New Zealand, ladies and gentlemen, the universally recognized number one ranked Heavyweight contender in the world, here is to a man, David Pua. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white and weighing in at 249 pounds. Since he captured Olympic gold in 1988, his professional record now stands at 37 victories, including 29 by knockout, with only one loss and one draw. From London, England, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the two-time world champion, the universally recognized reigning and defending undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Fantastic atmosphere here at the Mandalay Bay. David Tua from the tiny Samoan island of Baliatu, population 294. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all time. When I say break, I want you to break clean. I don't want any rough tactics. Unnecessary fouling, understand, guys? I Give me good sportsmen like Tondak. And remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. Joe Cortez, the experienced referee. The latest test for Lennox Lewis. 
towering over David Tua. 15 inch reach advantage for Lewis. But amazingly, Tua weighs only four pounds less. He really is a little roly poly heavyweight, one of the smallest men ever to challenge for the title. Though Rocky Marciano, John L. Sullivan, and Tommy Burns were smaller as champions. How does Tua get in range? Remember, he beat John Ruiz, who took Ivana Holyfield the distance in 19 seconds. World title fight number 14 for Lennox Lewis, who looked to dominate behind his jab. Tua going for that left hook early. Great right hand from Lewis there too, just mixing it up. Can he put Tua onto the back foot if he can do that and stop the Samoan coming forward? Then I think Tua's in big trouble. Oh. Tua oh, coming oh. in very low. Watch for Lewis to land that long right hand. That's what he's going to look for. He's going to try and hurt Tua early. Tua gave him a smirk then. It's a fast start from Lewis. He loves that overhand right. He's got the problem of having to punch down and Tua wasn't far away with that left hook. At 35, the reflexes are obviously still there for Lennox. Well, Tua has to launch himself like a little bomb as he comes forward towards Lennox. What happens if one of those lands? Tua says a lot of people have planned to stop my left hook, but nearly all of them have ended up on the canvas looking up at the lights. But remember, he hasn't fought quite at this level, not at the level of Lennox Lewis. And although he's never been down, I don't think he's ever faced anybody with Lewis's power as well. How many punches will he have to take to get in position to it here? You can see the strategic equation. Hasn't really landed at all yet, Tua. He hasn't. If he does land, we'll hear some thunder from down under. If he can get that left two gone. Well, they'll go absolutely crazy. All the Tua man spans here. He's got fast hands. He hasn't got fast feet, Tua. That's against them. Lewis dominating as expected at the moment behind that jab. Tua is dangerous every second he's in the contest. Good right to the body from Lewis this time. Well, Lewis, so massive physical advantages. That must give him you know, so much. He's just got to get that left jab going and then look for that right hand, punch down with it, get the power. Complete shutout, the opening round for Lewis. Never lost with Emmanuel yeah, Stewart in the corner. Took over after the defeat against Oliver McCall back in 1994. That's Lewis's own career defeat. Right here, okay? If you find a good fight, he's happy with what he's done so far. Be careful, yeah. use the no, jab. Just yeah. kept peppering away at the chin of Joe with that. I'm going to put somebody's here. Give me a towel. Give me that towel. Ronnie Shields, the former world ranked right welterweight, the chief man in the corner. Kevin Barry in there. Who Ford Van der Holyfield famously at the Olympics and won by disqualification. Don't get hit. Come on, get closer to that guy. Get closer. Here comes part two. Officially for the WBC and IVF World Heavyweight Championships, but in reality for the undisputed title in just about everybody's eyes. And Lewis can't afford to relax, can't afford to let his defences slip for a second. He's too quick enough to get a shot on. 
much like the first fight with Evander Holyfield at the moment. He found it very, very difficult to land his famed left hook. He's had this problem before, Lewis, and passed the test. Every time he does get... Look as if he's going to get within range. Lewis just grabs a little, pushes him away again. The problem for Tour is he may become a little frustrated and dispirited, trying to find a way past this jab and start to make one or two mistakes. Well, Lewis doing the right thing, keeping it long range, just peppering him with him. Long shots. And he blocked the left hook there, Glenn. That's the right hand. That's the punch that will start hurting to her. To her hasn't felt power like that before. Although he was knocked cold in the amateurs by Felix Sabon, the Cuban. He was out for ten minutes, apparently, that night. But he was a raw teenager then. Sharp little left hand from Lewis. All I see serene professionalism at the moment. Great right hand too. To a not difficult to hit. Good better from Tua, just getting close enough to get some time. Oh, a low up. blow. Low blow from Lewis. Very, very low. Tua's not worried about it, makes nothing of it. Well, Tua's is pretty professional, all about business. He'll not worry about things like that. That's part of the game. Lewis has to keep Tua busy. Can't afford just to go to sleep for a second. Needs to keep those punches coming. He needs to keep himself interested, doesn't he? Yep, especially when Tua isn't doing anything. Tua's will be waiting to get his punches off. There goes the attempted left hook, and he got it caught up in the ropes that time, Tua. <laughs> Missed with the left hook at the end of the round. Crowd got excited, but it didn't seem to land at all. There's the Tua fan club. Will they still believe? Quick comment from Audley Harrison. Then, what do you think the first two rounds, Audley? Yes, yeah, uh, Lennox is doing the right thing, but he's really going to have to be careful. And as I said before, Lennox has to minimise his mistakes and he can pull it up. Audley Harrison, who hoped to be following in Lennox Lewis's footsteps one day for Britain. Well, he's doing the right thing. There's that low shot. It was pretty low, but it's difficult for Lennox to get down that low to difficult part of the boy to aim for and there's that good left hook which just caught Lewis didn't give him too much trouble but it did catch proven to it is getting closer just a glancing blow but no more from Tua certainly not landing with anything like full force but who knows he might detonate one soon Lewis has the job of trying to keep him away for 12 rounds. It's already gone longer than Lennox's last two defences against Michael Grant and Franz Bota. He's just pouring with the jab now, though. Lennox is not really putting it out in any ramrod fashion. It's just a frustrating little pouring punch, but it is making Tua just have to realign himself as he thinks about attacking. Well, I think, you know, the, the lowness of the head of Tua, giving Lennox a few problems, just getting his accuracy right, needs to start putting that left hand out with more power. Just getting a little closer, Tua. Everybody waiting to see what happens if Tua can hit the jackpot with one of those left hooks. At the moment he must feel as if he's got 
a couple of hand grenades and the enemy lines are two miles away. Well, Lewis thinking a little bit too much of defence, waiting for Tua and not keeping that jab out strong enough, needs to concentrate on that. Tua can be dangerous with the right hand as well and he's got a pretty good uppercut if he ever gets close enough to land it. There's the attempted left hook again, again no more than a glancing blow though. Lewis doesn't really want to hang about on the ropes. Well, dropping the hands a bit as well, Lewis can't afford to be too cocky. Yes, he mustn't get complacent. That's good body punches from two, and that would be the answer for him. Referee wants them up a bit, that was a bit low from Tua, but this is better for him. He's gone to sleep a bit, Lennox here. Well, Lewis not throwing out the punches that he needs to do. He needs to keep two or off with good punches. Just finding little angles. Lewis, who likes to call himself the pugilist specialist. Very pro to a crowd. Big finish to the round from Lewis. But he didn't do that much. That's the scene outside, looking down towards Caesar's Palace, which staged all the this great fights. This guy is so scared of you, it's pitiful, you understand? You hit him on the arm and you hurt him. You gotta say, give me some water, give me some water. Do it, man. Listen. No. Keep using the up jab, the up jab. The right hand to the body, double the hook, and the straight right hand back to the chest. Double the up jab, the right hand to the body, two hooks to the top, and the right hand to the chest. Okay. Body shots are there. No guys. body shots. Educate. Relax. Your right hand. He's just about to open the follow in the tour. Corner running. She has given him lots of instructions, but it's difficult to follow all those. Is it just the phony war so far? So far, so good for Lewis. He was excellent in the first round. Totally dominant. Now he's opening up again here at the start of the fourth. Well, that's what we haven't seen yet. We've seen a careful Lewis just having a look at Tua. What's he going to be like when he starts unloading? Lewis's big worry, and that of his corner must be, can Tua get there with one, maybe sucker punch even? Tua has given the impression all week that he's prepared to walk through walls. He feels that tonight is his destiny. He may have to try to walk through some punches to get closer to Lewis and put him under some more intense pressure. Well, you want to see Lewis starting to double up on that jab, throw the... double up on the jab, throw the right hand, put something together. Just a bit too lazy and just throwing them single jabs. One of Tua's problems is he's not really that cute a boxer. He's not that smart an operator that he can get himself into position. It can be a bit plodding. Or some say he's just a one-pick trick pony. The power and no more. Well, often the power can be all you need. Lewis saving this week. You need more than power in the hairdo. I've got an Arsenal son. Remember well, that? That he certainly has got. But he's got to keep using it. This is better. He's not allowing Tua to get near him. Just keeping off with the jab. But you want to see a bit more from Lewis. There he goes again when the attempted left hook. Again. No luck. Little blemish on a slightly swollen left cheek of Tua. Tua's been outboxed though in the past by a couple of useful fringe contenders and has pulled it round late on. 
Nassim Rahman springs to mind. And Oleg Maskaev as well. Fellas would be in the top 15. Well, also the tour camp have said that Lewis doesn't fight all the time right through and stamina may be a problem if he's pushed. That's what they're going to try and do. Push Lewis, see if he'll tire towards the end. Ooh, the left hook again, doesn't find its target. You couldn't, with the best will in the world, give Tura a round so far, could you? No, you couldn't. I'd give him a draw of the third, but I couldn't give him a round. Lewis just dominating behind the jab. Tua missing with his big punches. man is getting tired of him. He's fighting a different fight, but he's never used to fight a thinking type fight. And all of a sudden, he's still trying to move left hook. He's really right there for you to start cracking And there it is, just how I've got it. You understand me? This guy's champion of the world. You understand me? Don't let this guy be champion of the world. Give me a deep breath. You understand? Come on, give me a deep breath. I want both hands moving now. You understand? What number is this? This is four. Five, number five coming up here. It's actually the fifth coming up now. <laughs> yes, you feel getting a bit frustrated, a bit anxious in the tour corner. He's missing wildly. There needs to get closer in before he unloads those big shots. Here's round five. Lennox Lewis looking to hold on to his position as heavyweight champion of the world. The feeling in the camp is that he's around his peak at this time. But there may only be one or two more fights, particularly if the big Tyson match fa fails to materialise. Lewis won't be exciting his critical American public with this performance. They respect him. That's a very good right hand. I want to see a bit more of that. I think they want to see him looking more dominant. At the moment, it's largely a negative exercise from him, isn't it? He's simply diffusing the two of Bob. Well, Lennox Lewis is most definitely a winner, and that's what he's trying to do. He's finding the best way to win here, to nullify Tua, and then he'll come on strong when he... Feels he's done that a bit, took the sting out of Tua. The shouting out from Lewis's corner, Harold Knight, gears change. I think they want to see him just open up a little more. I think as this goes on, you'll see Lewis start to throw in some classy combinations. Well, he's just picking Tua apart. Just letting them feel the power bit by bit. Right hand from Tua, seemed to land a glancing blow. But these are just sporadic little successes for Tua. You could almost count on two hands a number of times he's actually landed a punch. It almost looks at times as if Lennox Lewis is just playing with him in there. Oh, that time the left hand does get through. Well, at the same time, Lewis hit him with a left hand as well. They both caught to us. Maybe he's a bit better. Height, reach, class, extra experience, all working for Lennox Lewis at the moment. No real alarm bells as yet. And these are probing shots from Lewis. He hasn't started to let the, the big bombs of his go yet. Just trying to take two apart bit by bit. At the moment, it's looking as if Tua doesn't know enough. But that could change. He's always got the hope of the equaliser, as it's known. That's a really good body shot from Lewis. Doubles up on the jab for good measure. Just takes Tua to school, maybe even university for a few seconds. It's all Lennox Lewis. And he looks as if he's doing it within himself. Yes, he certainly does. You're right, taking him to school. He's just doing the right shots, throwing his punches so well. You're fighting a masterpiece in a lot of ways. Keep working what you do. You seem to be getting more relaxed with him. That's what's good about it. And you really start to feel just like a good gym workout. You're winning around clearly. 
good understanding between Emmanuel Stewart and Yannis Lewis. I don't think they're bosom buddies or anything like that, but they have a very high professional respect. Don't give this guy a fight, you understand? Audley, quick word. Yeah, Come Lennox on, is definitely go. giving him a boxing le guy. lesson, uh, taking away his sting, and he's looking really classy. He's not making any too many mistakes. And Lennox, if he keeps doing this, he's going to run away with this. Audley Harrison, Britain's oh. Olympic oh, champion, time. soon time. to time. Time. turn professional and should be making his debut in March, we're told. Now, there's a little bit of a mess in the tour corner. Somebody's spilt something. I think they're getting a bit excited in that corner tonight, you know. Yes, I think they are. They don't seem to be that professional, getting a bit anxious in there. I think they've even ripped the, the corner pad off in their frenzy. So here's a little moment of uh, mini drama. We've got Mark Ratner, the chairman of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, in there just uh, supervising everything. So more than a minute's break this time. Two fighters just okay, looking at each other across the ring from neutral corners. All right, all right. Not quite as dramatic as the paraglider of uh, Bo Holyfield fame. Well, we don't want anything as exciting as a paraglider, especially when we're indoors. Great right hand from Lewis. He's not having that much trouble punching down here. No, he's finding to a pretty easy to hit, isn't he? He thought it might be more difficult for him with a short opponent, but he's finding it pretty easy. There was a feeling that if Tua could get into the late rounds and put on some real pressure, that maybe he could take advantage, but he's been unable to apply any pressure to speak of. He's so strong, Lewis, as you found out when you fought him, Glenn. I did. He was amazingly strong. Stronger than any heavyweight that I've ever come across in fighting. Oh, there's a left hook. He's got him with a left hook. And Lewis took the punch. First time. And there's a right to follow. Well, at least that will lift to her. But he might be thinking, hello. He should have been flat on his back there. Well... It takes a bit more than that, I think, but he's trying hard, getting close, another good left hook. Well, here we go, little change here. Tua, at last, finds the range. Well, this is where Lewis needs to up the tempo. He can't start letting Tua get confident. He needs to nullify that left hook. He needs to start firing back, big right hands. If he was shaken by those punches, it didn't show. People criticised Lewis's chin in the past, but I think really it was always a pretty nonsensical accusation. He just got caught once by Oliver McCourt. It's the only time he's been down. But at least Tua managed to land the punch. You would imagine that face is getting pretty sore of Tua, having absorbed those left jabs. And he must be getting very, very frustrated. I think maybe a little embarrassed as well. He would have wanted to do better than this. Yes, he's a proud man and it'll worry him that he's missing so much, lurching in. Lewis said before the fight, when he feels the first jab, he'll realise he's in with a champion. I think he is realising that this is something different. But when you can hit, there's always a chance. No alarms, here's uh, your scorecard, Glenn. Yes, he's you pulling away, and Lewis 60 to 255, getting a nice big exactly. gap between the two this fighters. Half the fight. You understand? Look, the second half, look, it's no fucking tomorrow, you understand? You got to do this shit today. 
You're not throwing no right hands. You're not throwing combinations. You got to get closer. You got to throw both hands with this guy. Okay? Come on now. This they're getting desperate, I think, in that to a corner. I think they're disappointed in their man's effort. Right, seconds out. Yes, they thought he would have done better at this stage, getting closer, being more dangerous. There's the one of the good left hooks that he landed, but Lewis took it well. To a right songs and poetry, and he might have to be at his most creative here to find a way past this jab. But there's still half the fight to go. He's just going to have to gamble, I think, to her, isn't he? Well, he is. I think that's what we thought he would have done right from the start. He's never really been able to. But, I mean, that's down to the superior boxing, the size, the strength. You're everything that Lennox Lewis has as undisputed champion. Maybe Tua could have done with a bit more rounds in the ring over the last couple of years as well. He's only boxed about seven rounds in the last 23 months. A lot of easy knockouts, no real preparation for a test like this. One or two boos from the crowd who are disappointed that Tua can't make it more competitive. Well, also they might be a bit disappointed with Lennox not going forward, starting to make more of a fight to take the fight to Tua yet. Well, Lennox has just been sensible in doing that. He's just taking his time. Your white take chances. Well, he's always had that, that attitude, hasn't he? Don't give the other fella chances that he doesn't have. I think the accusation of caution against Lennox Lewis is a fair one. He's not a gambler by instinct. But his job is to win the contest in there strategically against the man in front of him. Sometimes that can result in less spectacular action than others and I think that's what we're getting here at the moment well there's nothing wrong with his boxing Lennox using the ring well just peppering away with that jab the odd right hand you know he's doing what it takes to win and make to a you know look at league below him maybe more than one league found the angle for the right hand he's playing with Tua at the moment Classy right hand. Picked off again from range with the artillery, David Tua. Lewis being careful never to just stand in front of Tua. Just always on the move from side to side slightly, changing the angle. Bringing that right hand into play more in this round, Lewis finding Tua pretty easy to hit with that punch. Just off balance a moment there, Lewis. It's another round in the bank for him, though. A lot of the casinos, you can see there down the strip tonight, are putting on close circuit showings of this fight because they couldn't fit all the people in here that wanted to see it. And it's not a danger to get hit when you do it. So I took more left hooks. I went in the Ray Robinson hook when you saw him knock out the guy. He, you know, he's perfect for the hook. He's, he's going into the history lesson in there now. Yeah, they're learning. They're obviously getting confident. They want to show him. I'm going to bring back things from videos now. Well, talking of history, remembering when Jersey Joe Walcott was completely outboxing Rocky Marciano, and Marciano hit him with his Susie Q in the 13th. It only takes all in one punch. It only takes one punch in this game. That's all it takes. Round eight coming up. Lewis, a street ahead on points. No blow from Tua, he acknowledges it. He seems so fired up all week, Tua. Tonight, for me, from the moment he's got in the ring, he's just looked a little bit flat. Well, maybe in their confidence they underestimated the, the skills, the strength and everything else that Lennox Lewis possesses. They certainly all talk very highly about his destiny and what he was going to do. Now it's time to prove he can do it. The 
It's just a boxing lesson at the moment from Lennox Lewis. Using all his natural advantages here to just put the rounds in the bank. It's not exciting, it's nothing like exciting, but it's very, very professional. And before people get too critical, I can remember a guy called Muhammad Ali who did this sometimes too. Yep, that's exactly right. It's not all about bravado, it's about keeping your title. To his left eye is swelling up. There's a little graze there, nothing serious. Tua needs to get some pressure on, but that's easy for me to say, and apparently extremely difficult for him to do. Well, he needs to try and be more aggressive. He's got to try and fight in a, a Joe Frazier type, type style where he's right in close. He's letting shots go with both hands. He's not going to try and let Lewis off the hook, and he's giving Lewis far too much room. That's better from Tua, three punches to the body. He needs more of that, much more of it. Glass from Lewis again. Two punch combination. How much is all of this taking out of Tua, mentally as well? Well, a lot of people have said he had a mountain to climb. I bet he didn't think the mountain was this high. Well, it's almost the north face of the Eiger at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's wearing roller skates. Another round into the bank vaults for Lennox Lewis. Boos who want from those fans who want to see Lewis really open up and turn on the style. You want to get this, I don't think he's going to do that. His title. This is the champion. You understand? This is the champion. You have to take the title. The guy you gonna sit down and say, "Here, oh here, David, take the title." You understand? You're walking around, you're not doing nothing. You're not winning these rounds, you're so far behind. You need a knockout now, you understand? You need a knockout. Let's have a quick win with Audley Harris, and Audley, it sounds like they're getting desperate in that tour corner. Definitely, yeah, Tua's not doing what he said he was going to do, and he's found how hard it is to actually close down someone like Lennox Lewis. Lennox is boxing beautifully, and he's definitely using the right tactics for this fight. Lennox is getting a few boos, justified? I don't really think, I don't think Lennox wants to be getting involved trying to mix up with this guy. It's not about pride, it's about Lennox Lewis walking away with his belts intact, and this is the right tactic for it. Thanks, Audley. Here's round nine. Tua hasn't won a round so far. He might indeed have lost every round. I did give him a share of the third. Little smirk on Tua's face. They'll be so disappointed watching, I know, in New Zealand, which has come to a standstill. They're expecting the biggest TV audience ever there. Sunday tea time it is in New Zealand. Still to prove here that underneath the exuberance of the war cries, he can really cut it at this level. But is there one huge moment of drama yet to come here? He hasn't even had to hold much, has he, Lewis? A lot of people thought he'd be grabbing all the time. Yes, he hasn't. He hasn't been that sort of fight. Lewis has used you know, his footwork and just boxed nicely, used the jab. Never really had to up the tempo that much, Lewis. Just used his superior skills. Oh, big, big left hook. To it, took the punch. He's got a great chin. That might have floored a lot of men. Well, he doesn't want to take too many combinations like that. 
It was a jolting shot from Lennox Lewis. Blocked the attempted left hook. He's so good at negating the other fellow's chief weapon. Did it against Holyfield. He's doing it here against Tua. He did it against Phil Jackson earlier on in his career as well, when we had a similar sort of equation, but it's not exactly the same thing. Well, it'll be good to start to see Lennox push Tua under the back foot now. Start to let him have the shot. Looks like he's softened him up, and now Tua will be getting sickened by taking these punches. That left eye starting to just close a little bit of Tua now. Lewis. Extra confidence now, he's just beginning a little dance. Look at Lennox, he might be lining up something here. Yep, I think he feels the, the strength running out of Tua. Hang on, hang on, please, hang on. But I suppose as his ambition to turn on the start a little bit and open up rises, it opens the possibility of him making a mistake, but he's not looked like making one. It's no thriller, but... Lennox Lewis is just getting the job done and how. Three rounds. He's going out there trying to hit him with one shot. One punch. You're not doing nothing. Anything. You know? You're not out of this fight. You know why you're not out of this fight? Because you can punch. You understand? But if you don't use your hands, I need a but that punch is his only chance now. He can't he can't win the fight on the scorecards. He can't. And look at his face now, the confidence gone. That looks a man who's sickened by the punches he's taken. And Lewis sits there looking like he's been for a haircut. Good combination. Left to right hand from Lennox. And that's how to negate a left to. Perfect timing, right hand up, and everything took out of the punch. And Lewis comes back out to work again in round 10 in his size 17 boots. He's been in this business now 23 years, man and boy. Telegraph the left hook and Lewis makes him pay here with a whole series of punches in punches. Tua looks disorganised. A flurry of action and that's what the fans here have been waiting to see. But this is one of the most one-sided World Heavyweight Championship fights I've ever seen. Yes, I just want to, I just think the crowd want to see the, the polish put on this performance. Just a little bit in the end of a, a good Lewis finish. I would think I'd send everybody home happy. Yeah, they want to see him close the show, as they say over here. I think the feeling is it's all a bit antiseptic and technical for them at the moment. We are seeing Lewis the chess master here. But to be fair to him, in the build-up to this fight, he never once said he thought it was going to be an exciting fight. In fact, privately, he was saying exactly the reverse. Because I think he knew how he'd have to go about this particular mission. We're seeing a smart guy in action. We're seeing a, a guy who's proven he's king of the heavyweights. He's just head and shoulders above everybody else out there. This is the number one contender, beaten only once by Ike Ibiabuchi in a fight where more punches were thrown in 12 rounds than in the Thriller in Manila. Frazier Ali three in 14 rounds. Maybe not quite the same quality punches, however. I think Tua quite honestly knows He's getting a boxing lesson in there. Twice more misses with the left hook. Lewis's reflexes are remarkable for a man of his age. Well, 35 is not that bad for a heavyweight. He's really in his prime at the minute. This is just a, a good performance, good boxing. It's careful, but I mean, you know, he's just not getting hit at all, Lewis. 
He's hardly got a mark on him. Switching the angles here, turning on a bit of the old razzle-dazzle, Lennox Lewis. Almost as if it's all so ridiculously easy for him. And it is. It is all ridiculously easy. Well, if this does go to decision, they won't need a recount here, Glenn. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, Tua just not in the fight. Lewis, I would imagine, has had hardest sparring sessions. No jab, no nothing. You're not giving me anything. Just give me punches now. Just jump on top of this guy, David. This guy, you, you can hurt this guy. You understand? I don't think they're getting through to him, are they now? They're not. I mean, you're in his head, he'll want to do it. You know, he'll have the brave, he'll have anything in there. But you just can't physically do it with somebody as good as Lennox Lewis. They were talking about uh, Tua's hair getting in Lewis's eyes. It's starting to get in his own eyes now. <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, David Tua has six minutes here to do something sensational to turn this thing on its head. And it would be sensational. Of course, part of Lewis's motivation here is to go through and hopefully they can negotiate a showdown with Mike Tyson which is the fight the world wants to see really and uh, Tyson's manager Shelley Finkel is at ringside well I think this is showing you that there's not that many fights out there for Lennox Lewis he's at his best he's head and shoulders above everybody else you know there's Mike Tyson and that's the only name that Lewis really wants and other than that you know he's just he's right up there he's you know boxing so good at this stage in his career David Tua needs a knockout. Blocked again, the left hook. We'd have to say on what we've seen here, Lewis at the moment is in a class apart from the rest of the heavyweight division. combination there from Lewis and he still just keeps pumping out that left jab I think David Tua will be dreaming about that punch hitting him in the face for weeks after this it's only a few fans who are booing but there are some fans who want to see World War 3 every time they come to a boxing match but this has never ever got competitive oh Look at that. Four punch cluster again from Lewis. He's doing what he wants, isn't he? Yes, this is nothing but target practice for Lewis. And in there at the moment, Tua's reputation is going down the drain. Left eye. Looking very angry. Another Lewis round. <laughs> Olympic champion Audley Harrison. It's amazingly one-sided. Yeah, I mean, technically, Lennox has got everything right. I mean, the, to the two account were making lots of noises beforehand, but it just shows, you know, two is not ready to step up to this grade yet, and, and it's definitely Lennox's time. Great performance so far from Lennox Lewis. And, Glenn, another point that strikes me here is a lot of people saw this as a sort of rehearsal if there was a Tyson fight. Tyson would have the same kind of problems, wouldn't he, really, getting anywhere near Lennox Lewis. I think, he would, I think Tyson would get to Lewis a bit quicker. He threw more punches. I think David Tua has just been ponderous in this fight and never got the shots off. 
and I have to tell you some people are leaving the arena quite a few people are leaving the arena well he's just such a big winner I mean I've got him massively ahead on my scorecard 10 points ahead 110 100 have you ever seen anything this big in a heavyweight title fight it looks like it's going to go the full 12 rounds unless to a can produce some dramatics but he's shown no sign I have to tell you of doing that so far there's always a lot of big talk in the build-up to these fights and there was quite a bit of it not from to himself so much as his manager notably Kevin Barry but when it's come to it David to it just has not been able to perform. Lennox Lewis hasn't allowed him to. Well, look at the way it's going, that tour camp. They're going to have to eat some pretty big words after this. One or two howls. I have to say, I don't think this is Lennox Lewis's fault. Because it's not a spectacle, because Tua can't make it one. But for Lennox, it's not about being a spectacle. I think this is Lennox Lewis's fault because what he's doing is annihilating David Tua. Peppering him with a jab. I don't think in his wildest dreams, even he could have expected it would be that easy. Tua's now got a cut by that left eye that had been so angry. It's too late to matter. 80 seconds left. Well, Tua has been doing some training with um, WWF The Rock. He could have done with The Rock in there with him. He also had a wrestler, didn't he, in the build-up because he thought there'd be a bit of, you know, holding. He's The Rock, is he? That's The Rock, <laughs> right. that's him. Glenn knows about these things. <laughs> Big right hand from Lewis, that just moved Tua off his feet. There's a sort of rueful smile from Tua. Well, I think Tua will just be thinking now, how long have I got to go taking these punches? Well, I'll tell you what, I think he'd like a tunnel that would open up and take him somewhere a long way from this arena because I think he'll be very embarrassed about how this has gone. Too good. Too classy, Lennox Lewis, still number one, so dominant, so supreme, coming up to the last ten seconds, and it's a shutout here, I think he might have won every round on every card, you could argue about the third possibly, it's late, very late, one last gamble from David Tua, it's all over, you don't need a recount here, there's nothing close about this like the American presidential election. We can give you the decision straight away. The president of the heavyweights is still Lennox Lewis. It was a cakewalk. Absolutely. He just did that like a sparring session. He just dominated throughout, proved he is you know, a tremendous champion. And that was, you know, it's brilliant to see a boxer who can dominate the heavyweight division like this. You know, he's British, he's bad, you know, he's Lennox Lewis, he's superb, it really was a great performance. And before people say, oh, it was all too clinical, too antiseptic, remember Lennox Lewis, when the chance arises and there's a different style mix, he blasted out Michael Grant in two rounds, he blasted out Franz Bota in a couple of rounds. Tonight, he worked out in his head, the perfectionist for him, that the way to do the job was to pick two or apart from distance and do exactly what he did and he didn't lose a round doing it he didn't it was a master class of boxing he just said there it's science and it was um you know it was science he's just such a, a big big winner and i've got him by 11 rounds the best i could give to her was a share in the third that's what i've got it 11 rounds to none with one even Well, some people left the arena, others, I think, sat there just wondering at Lennox Lewis's skills.
they didn't get the fireworks they expected. So disappointing for all those people who travelled for a lot of money from New Zealand. We await the official announcement of their decision. Jerry Roth, Chuck Giampa, Dave Moretti, the Nevada judges. There have been controversies in Nevada in the past. There have been controversies with Lennox Lewis, notably in that first Holyfield fight. There will not be a controversy here. Ladies and gentlemen, here. here at the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino of Las Vegas, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Jerry Roth scores the bout 117 to 111. Dave Moretti has it 119 to 109. And Chuck Jaffa scores it 118 to 110. All for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, the universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world from Great Britain, Lennox Landslide decision for Lewis, and I'm surprised that Jerry Roth could see three rounds for David Tour in there. I'd like him to tell us what.